What's up y'all? I'm Alan Hayne, the Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for coming back for yet another week. So there's no really easy way to do this except just to come out and tell you. And what I gotta tell you is, if you can't tell already, I got a new lawn. Now what's interesting is, and you guys know I'm always like super transparent with you about everything, I got a new lawn by getting it sponsored. This video and two others are being sponsored by a company called Sod Solutions. Sod Solutions are the people that actually brought you this beautiful Empire Zoysia you see behind me. They also have a product called Lawnify, which is a really cool, super easy way to uh, apply nutrients and fertilizer and things like that to your lawn via hose-in sprayer. So I'm actually gonna be using their Lawnify products to get my sod here established. <laughs> yeah, I guess I should have kind of told you that from the beginning, huh? This is Empire Zoysia Grass. And for those of you that might be new here, this area of the lawn is what we were calling Frankenlawn 2. And the reason was, was because this area here, ever since I moved in pretty much, has been 70% wild Bermuda grass, maybe 20% St. Augustine, and then the rest was this invasion of torpedo grass. So in other words, I really did not have any viable lawn here, and now I do. Now we're gonna talk a little bit more here coming up on why I actually wanted to have zoysia grass here. But before we do that, what's really cool is, is I actually got to go out to the actual sod farm where this is grown and meet Travis Council. He's the owner and grower at Council Growers. And they're only like 20 minutes from here. So what's cool about it is, is this sod was born and raised in its first part of its life, only 20, 30 minutes from where it is today. And so it was really cool that I got to go out to the farm and meet Travis and I actually interviewed him, but as typically can happen with me sometimes, the wind was really bad and I relied on my equipment here to be able to block the wind out and it did not work really well. But So I'll tell you what, Travis, so <laughs> you got me excited now because I'm looking at this. I've been wanting to have some zoysia for a while. I have actually been wanting to mow lower because I've been mowing tall with my St. Augustine. I'm looking forward to doing something that's a lot different and actually handling a grass type that's a lot different. The other thing is we didn't talk about this uh, zoysia, it spreads through rhizome and stool. So do I get an advantage there over a St. Augustine just because of, you know, I don't have the rhizomous issue with, uh, or the rhizomous growth with St. Augustine? Absolutely. If you notice out here, if you can pan over to where we've harvested, um, you notice there is no, we, we call it a ribbon in the sod business. And with some varieties of sod, we have to leave a narrower ribbon because we don't have the rhizome system. But with Empire, you'll develop that good rhizome base that's that's gonna help you in all the things we've talked about and give you that good solid base. So you go guys, the next time you see me and this zoysia, this zoysia will be actually in my lawn. Now, I did get to spend quite a bit of time talking to Travis and, and asking him about Empire Zoysia and some of the qualities about it and what's he like about it and you know that kind of thing. Cause I mean, again, he's the grower and if I'm gonna hear from someone that's an expert, it is definitely the grower. Um, so there were a few things that I did learn from him that I will pass on to you, even though I can't like show you the interview again cause the wind whistling through it was really bad but I will tell you though that meeting Travis was pretty awesome and if he'll have me back out again on the farm I would like to spend a little bit more time out there anyway just hanging out with the cool kids and understanding how the grass grows and all that kind of stuff so I will make sure for sure to get him into a video uh, sometime coming up here over the next few months but but either way he did teach me a lot and tell me a lot of things and some of those things are what I'm gonna pass on to you here Okay guys, so here are the main things that Travis told me as to why he prefers Empire Zoysia. And the first thing that he pointed out was it's got a medium-sized blade that is soft, especially when compared to Floratam or other St. Augustine varieties. He said the people up north really like that, and I do too because I've been looking for a barefoot grass, and this is it. The second thing he talked about was irrigation, and there's a lot of information out there about Empire Zoysia saying that it does better than St. Augustine in periods of drought, and Travis was quick to point out it still does require water to keep it green. However, if you do go through a drought period and things do dry out, the zoysia will come back much faster and much healthier when it does begin to get water again, whereas St. Augustine a lot of times just dies out. So the word we would use there is, it's more resilient. We also talked a lot about mowing and I'll talk a little bit more about that, but this does have a lower mowing requirement. And when I say that, he says you still need to mow it every week, but if you did happen to let it go 9, 10, 11 days, it's not gonna be the end of the world, where with St. Augustine, you'd probably be at seven inches tall and scalping it. Another quality is the chinch bug resistance. It's not bulletproof, but it's definitely resistant, and that's a big deal down here in Florida. And then finally, you heard us talk a little bit about this, but it's gonna grow an extremely thick turf because it's got rhizomes, which run kinda under the surface and spread, and it also has stolons, which kinda run at the surface and spread, and both of those are what create a nice, dense, formed turf.
so that's all the great things about Empire Zoysia and trust me I am really looking forward to going barefoot on this but I want to talk to you a little bit further about some specifics of why I chose to have Zoysia in this section of my lawn and why this is the best choice for me this section of the lawn here has not been touched um, but I wanted to come over here to illustrate a point to you and that point is right here So this is wild Bermuda that has come into my Flora Tam St. Augustine here, and that's what this grass type is. This wild Bermuda, we've talked about it before, once it gets in, there's really nothing you can do about it in Flora Tam here because there are no chemicals that will kill or fight off or suppress the wild Bermuda without also killing your good St. Augustine. So you are stuck, and these things don't play well together. Bermuda does really well at a one inch cut height or lower, St. Augustine's got to be three and a half, I mean minimum, but really, you know, I push it to four and a quarter or taller. So they don't play together. They're two different blade styles, so they don't even look good together. I mean, you have the Bermuda with its, you know, small compact blade, and then you have the St. Augustine with its fat blade. So they just do not play well at all. And I can tell you that that is probably the most common question I get that people that have St. Augustine grass ask me is, Alan, how do I get rid of Bermuda in St. Augustine? And the terrible thing is, is I just don't have an answer for them. And so here with Zoysia, that actually now gives me an option. The uh, active ingredient, I think you pronounce it Flausifop. It looks really cool, it sounds really funny. I think a brand name you might find out there is called Ornamec, but either way, that product right there that will suppress and over time drive out or kill Bermuda grass in the zoysia lawn. It now opens up a tool to me that I didn't have previously. And that was very important because as I told you, this area here was 70% Bermuda. I actually think someone must have seeded Bermuda in here because there are a lot of lawns in this neighborhood that are invaded with wild Bermuda for sure. And I even have it again, like I showed you on another part of my lawn, but this thing here was majorly Bermuda, extreme Bermuda. So I'm pretty sure somebody also seeded something in here that they shouldn't have, which is a problem all in and of itself, but that's been solved now. <laughs> I just noticed that I haven't uh, cleaned up all this over here yet. Sorry about that. But, you know, this is a true reality show here. And the second reason that I chose Zoysia for over there in Franken Lawn 2 is kind of similar. And this is with something I've talked about quite a bit. And that is a major invasion of torpedo grass. So let me show you that. All right, so here's torpedo grass, and this one does blend a little better with the St. Aug, but still not that great. So this is what it looks like when it's mowed, and this is what most of you are going to see it looking like um, because it, it takes on this more compact growth habit when you mow it a lot. Um, and, and I think some people might even confuse it for wild Bermuda, but this is what it looks like when it's cut. This is torpedo grass. Once this gets in your grass, you can kind of see it all through here. Uh, this is, again, Floritam here. You can kind of see it all through here. And it, it just kind of weaves its way in. Now, the thing about this stuff is it will creep and creep and creep. I mean, it started actually way on the other side over there where Frankenlawn is, and now it's over here. So it went underneath the house to get this far, and the rainy season this year didn't help because that really, really pushed it. So the thing about it is over on this side of the lawn, I'm kind of managing it in sections. I don't know if you can tell right here, but this is a section where I had cut it out and just resodded right there. Um, and that's kind of what I've been doing on this side of the lawn because the problem is not too terrible yet. So I'm able to manage it in sections like that. But as I mentioned with Franken lawn over there, that was not a choice because that's actually where the torpedo grass started. And so that's also where it was the worst. And so now having Zoysia over here in Franken lawn too, this opens up yet another tool in my toolbox and that's a very inexpensive tool that most of you are familiar with and that is quinclorac. Quinclorac will suppress and over time push back and kill torpedo grass. Might take a couple laps but again I got a fresh clean slate here so if I stay on top of it early it shouldn't become too much of a problem and I should be able to control it fairly easily with the quinclorac. And the third reason that I chose to get zoysia here and especially empire zoysia is because this stuff is going to look really really good cut low and yes eventually I am going to get a real mower on this and go for it that way take it down to a quarter inch but I'm not going to go that extreme yet I need to let this thing settle in and I'm going to cut it at one inch and I'm going to use a rotary mower now what that does though even cutting at one inch is that opens up a lot of possibilities for me and one can be cultural control of certain weeds there are certain weeds that can invade here but they will you can keep them out by mowing low they just can't grow at a tall cut so that is another advantage to having a, a 
grass type here that you can actually mow lower is it allows you to maybe get some cultural control through mowing and you guys know I love to mow one of the things they talk about with this grass type is that you probably don't need to mow it as much but you still can mow it as much as you want so just because somebody tells you that a grass type is you know low maintenance it doesn't require a lot of mowing it doesn't mean you can't mow it every four days because that's what I'm gonna do anyway doesn't matter what the grass thinks it wants I'm gonna cut it every four days <laughs> But if you think about it though, having that kind of flexibility, if you're mowing at one inch with your rotary and you do happen to miss a mowing or two or go out of town or whatever, and you come back, you sure you have a lot of play in your mower. With mine, I can go all up to four and a quarter so I could bring it back down slowly. Where I'm at now with my Floritam, uh, I mow it on the top setting and that's all I have. I have zero flexibility. I can't go any higher because the mower won't do it and I can't go any lower because it's too low for the grass. So being able to mow low actually gives you a lot more flexibility and a lot more things that you can do. So that kind of opens up again more tools to you so there you go guys that's the first video in the series here about franken lawn 2 that's been reskinned with beautiful empire zoysia so make sure you subscribe to the channel and remember in the next video i'm gonna actually show you all the aftercare here watering as well as introduce you to the lawnify products so we can make sure that this empire zoysia gets established with really solid deep roots really fast so with that i'm alan hayne the lawn care nut thanks for watching and i'll see you in the lawn